morning, everyone, and welcome to the HTML5 lecture series at SNHU. I'm Tom Adamson, visiting professor, and this is lecture six, and we're going to be talking about elements. You might say, well, what's elements? They're important. Let me, let me, let me explain why. Uh, first of all, is this hat okay? I wore it last time. What do you think? Okay? All right. Uh, I didn't get any complaints via email from the last lecture wearing it, so it's my fishing cap. I'll wear it again. Let me explain to you why elements are so important. Um, elements in HTML or HTML5 can be treated as objects. Now, for those of you that are newbies and what have you, an object may not be a big deal to you. But for us that are into business, it is a big deal. And for you, it should be a big deal. That's where we're going to spend time on elements. What an object is, an object has two things. It has properties and it has methods. Now what this means is that anything, anything at all on the web page that you see, let's say you have a picture here. This picture we'll see is an element. And what you can do with these objects is that you can find out what the dimensions of this picture are. Uh, that's its property, you know, how high it is, how wide it is, where it's located on the screen. You can change any of those properties that you want. Uh, not only that, you can use a method that will cause the picture to move across the screen. You can use a method that would cause pictures to change uh, different images. So when we talk about elements in a web document, what we're really talking about are objects. Now you might say, okay, I'm cool with that. So that's why we need to spend time with this. The other thing is, is that when you look at lit literature for HTML5, the literature for HTML5, here's a person here, and they're looking at the uh, the HTML5 literature, okay, they're a little bit upset. I can tell you why they're a little bit upset. And let's say they're, they're using the classic way of looking at literature. Uh, they're actually using a book, okay? They're not looking at it on the web. And this is HTML5. They're trying to learn about HTML5. Now, most folks that have done anything with web design and you're probably one of them, uh, when they did, took a course in web design, they didn't have to learn about HTML. All they had to do was learn about an editor. It could have been Dreamweaver. But that's a great editor. So what they did is that they took a course in web design, and what they really learned was how to use an editor. They didn't learn anything about the code. When they read about HTML5, uh, literature, and they tried to keep up with it, HTML5 literature assumes that you already understand what elements are. Not just the definitions, but you clearly understand what they are. So, here's some terminology we're going to be covering. It's not a case of knowing the definition of it. It's a case of understanding it. Like, for example, do you know what an a, uh, element is? Do you know what an empty element is? Do you know what a void element is? Do you know a start tag? Do you know what the difference is between content and uh, presentation.
and structure. You understand what these things are here? Do you know what an end tag is? Do you know what an opening tag is? Question mark, question mark. Do you know what a closing tag is? Question mark. Not only do you, do you have to know what the definitions are, you really have to understand what these things are. Because if you don't understand what these things are, and in the future you're looking up the latest and greatest things that are happening in HTML5, the HTML5 documentation is not going to start with the basics. It's going to assume that you know these. And if you don't know these, you're going to be lost here. That's why we're covering it now. Okay, so with that said, okay, so... Let me get rid of this guy here. Mm -hmm. And let me get my academic notes here. I've already had some of my coffee. What is an element? An element can be thought of as a component that is a part of a system that contains other components. In other words, an element has parts, and it, they're treated, these parts are treated as a whole, and it's in a system that contains other elements that have parts that can be treated as a whole. And you might say, okay, so what's the big deal here? All right, what we have here, let me show you what an element looks like, an H T M L element. All elements have three things. And one of the things is optional. What it has, it has something like this. Welcome to my site. Here's the three things. This right here is an HTML element. They all look, they all have the same structure. They have what we call is a start tag. They all have what is called an end tag. And they may or may not have content. Now, what is a start tag? Well, you know, when you play tag, you, you played tag when you were a kid and what have you, uh, people go around and uh, let's say uh, somebody's it and you're trying to run away from them and they come up and they touch and they say, okay, you're it. So I've been tagged, okay? Now that means I've got to do something. So I'm going around chasing people and I don't want to be in the browser on about the content. You might say, well, what's content? Bear with me. Let's talk about the end tag. The end tag tells the browser to stop these 
instructions. Okay, so the start tag begins the instructions to the browser about the content. In other words, this start tag tells the browser, this is how I want this content, what I want done with it. In this case here for the H1 tag, the browser understands that it's to display it in the largest size that's capable of displaying it with that tag. The content is the information to be presented on the web page. Remember, the web page is what the user sees. That's the web page. The web document is what it contains the instructions that it gives to the browser. The browser now takes these instructions and then paints and renders the web page, and then the viewer looks at that, and that's what the viewer sees. So we have the difference between a start tag and the end tag End tag is like the start tag, but contains the forward slash. There's one more thing to know about tags inside the element tags inside the element is that tags are never displayed uh, on the web page. So you'll never see a tag on the web page. Tags are only, these tags right here, they're only in the web document that's being sent to me from the server that comes to the browser for interpretation. Once the browser interprets it and what have you, the tags are never displayed. Let me show you what I mean here. I've got something on the, on the, on the screen here. I've got a, an HTML document called My Page. I'm going to right click and open it with my favorite editor, which is Notepad. And what I see here is an element. This is an HTML element. This is the start tag. This is the end tag. This is the content. Hello, everyone. The, the, the start tag and the end tag look exactly the same way, except for the forward slash, which designates the start tag, uh, uh, the end tag, I'm sorry. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on that and open it and see this is now instructions to this, to this browser. This is, this is a document. What I'm now going to look at is I'm going to look at the web page that's produced by this uh, element. So to do that, I'm going to uh, reduce the size of this. I'm going to double click on this, and there it is. Now let's compare the two. This is the web page. This is the web document. You're seeing it through the browser. Notice that you do not see the tags in the web page. But what you do see are the instructions that you were supposed to do with this content. You might say, well, what were you we supposed to do? Let's change the instruction. Instead of H1, let's make this H3 and close it with H3. Different instruction, but it's still an element. Right now, this is the H1 element. We're going to make it the H3 element. So I come over here, and I come over here, and I, I have to save it, so I'm doing a Control S, and then I'm going to refresh this. So what happened? Well, with this new instruction, this is now an H3 element, it made the content smaller. So you see the browser took the instruction, but did not display the tags on 
on the output. Now, let me show you something about, this is markup, is, is what this is. Let me show you something about, uh, about markup here. I'm going to close this. I'm going to close this. What I have here is a rich text document, RTF. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to double click on it to open it. And I see this is my really cool stuff. Now, this is content. All this is content. What do you see has happened to this content here, the my? It's bold, right? And what do you see about cool? K-O-O-L? Well, that's nuclear cool. This is now italics, is it not? Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at the markup for this. I'm going to reduce the size of this. And I'm going to come in here. And now, just like I did with the web browser, I'm going to open this RTF document with my favorite editor, uh, Notepad. And what do you see in Notepad? Let me get this out of the way here. Let me reduce this. In Notepad, do you see my? You see this is my? What do you see around my? You see this right here? This is an element for, uh, for rich text format. Do you see its opening tag is a backslash with a B for what? For bold. You don't see it here, do you? No, because it doesn't display it. Do you see the closing tag for bold? It's a B uh, uh, zero right here, B-O, right? And do you see really? What do you see f f starting for cool to make it italics? There it is. That's the instruction to the rich text format. Cool, and that's the closing tag. And then what do you see starting right here? Uh, the, a paragraph. What do you see this? What do you suppose that is FS22? That's the font size. The font size on this uh, now for the new one is going to be 22. All of this right here is header information that gives information to uh, the, the, the rich text uh, document on, on information. And we'll find that the same thing is true on a web page. So markup is not only used for web pages, it's also used for word processors. It's also used for spreadsheets. But you don't see it, okay? But the, the device does. Okay, so let me go ahead and close this and close this, and let me go on to the, uh, to the next one. Now, I'm going to give you an example of some elements. We'll have a look at them. The important thing is to get the concept of what an element is. It has a starting tag, and it may or may not have an ending tag. You say, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said it always did. Well, bear with me. And then the other thing, too, is that it may or may not have content. It will evaporate and you buy more. OK, here's an example. I'm going to put here H1, and this is my story. And here's close H1. Okay, so here's an H1 element. This is the opening tag, start tag. This is the closing tag, the end tag. This is my content. And so I'm going to start here with the, with the start tag, which is means a paragraph. This is my um, B for bold, start bold, real, let's end the bold. So this is a bold element, okay, uh, story that I, and I'm going to put this in italics, no, I'm going to stop the italics. You will like. And I'm going to end the paragraph. As you can see here, what I have is I have an H1 element. I have a paragraph element that starts here and ends way over here. And look, look what's inside the paragraph element. I have two other elements inside the paragraph element. I have a bold element, and I have an italic element. So what does that mean? 
It means that elements can contain other elements. Now, what's so really cool about that is that when we come to treat this as an object, I can treat this whole paragraph as an object that has properties and methods, and within that object, I can treat the bold and the italic as separate objects because they're separate elements, but they're contained in here. So what happens to the paragraph element, what I do with that, is also going to affect the bold element and the italic element, but what I do with the bold element will not affect the paragraph element or the italic element. This gives me tremendous power over what I can do with a website. And you're beginning to see the, the secrets of uh, HTML5. Okay, so let's see what I got here now. We're going to look at, and this might sound a little bit weird to you, but weirdness sometimes uh, takes a while to, to understand. You'll understand this weirdness when uh, we get into some more details, but I have to explain it to you now. And what these are called, these are called empty elements. And this is the definition of an empty element. An empty element uh, does not have any content. And let me give you an example. An example of an empty element would be this. Start a paragraph, end the paragraph. And notice there's no content. You say, why would you want to do that? That, that looks pretty dumb. Well, the reason why is because even though it has no content, when we get into using the document object model, we can take an empty element like that and on the fly, while you're looking at the page, uh, put content in it. So the, an empty element does not have any content. And sometimes an empty element can be shown like this. Now, of course, somebody looking at that, you know, they're going to try and figure out, they're going to be really, really surprised to see something like that and say, gee, what, why would I even want something like that? And so, um, of course, when they look surprised, they're going to say something like, wow, you know, uh, what is that for? And that's a good question to ask. Well, it's for a future lecture, but we really need to define it now. An empty element does not contain any content. Okay, now, 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 ooh, yes, now, now. Now we need to look at, besides empty elements, we need to look at a void element. What's the definition? Void elements do not have a closing tag. They simply don't have a closing tag, which means they're not going to have any content, no content. I say, what? That's, that's, what? What is that? Well, one of them, one of them is a BR for a line break. That's an empty element. Another one is an HR for a horizontal, horizontal line. That's, uh, I'm sorry, these are void elements. Let, let me illustrate what I mean here. I can show you what I mean. Okay, with my, with my super duper browser. If I can find it here. Yeah, here it is. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up with my favorite editor, which is Notepad. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this out and I'm going to put um, 
this, whoops, come on. I'm going to take this out and let me go ahead and delete it. Okay. This is to illustrate a line break. Note that uh, a break here does not uh, follow. Whoops! I, I hit the uh, I hit the uh, the mouse pad. What you uh, see here. Now, notice I have line breaks here in the document. I'm going to save this and let's see what these line breaks do when I look at the web page. Do you see that? The line breaks on the web page are determined by the size of the browser. It has nothing to do where the line breaks were here in the document. So let's say that I wanted a line break here right after the word line break. Well, the only way I can do that now is by changing the size of the browser. There it is. Okay, so if I wanted a line break there, I put a void element, br, and the way I normally do it is I put a space with a forward slash following it like that. I can leave that part out. It'll still work. Now watch what happens. I'm going to come back here now, break this out again, and I'm going to refresh it. What do you see now? Now you see there is a line break there. That's because of this void element. I didn't have to do it that way. I could have done it this way. And let me do a save and do this here. Still gives me the line break where I want it from this void element. But convention uh, tells me to put a space in with a forward slash like that. Now, when I do that, that means it's pretty much guaranteed it'll work on just about all internet appliances. So if I want to if I want to hard code a line break, I have to use a void element. Notice this has no content. There, there, it, all it is is just a line break. The same thing if I want to put uh, a um, HR in here. That's a void element as well. Control S to save. Let's see what happens. It gives me a nice line. You see the line down the bottom. That's what, that's what this right here does, OK? So these are void elements. You want to see an empty element? OK, fine, let's show you an empty element, OK? Uh, there's um, that. We'll make a paragraph an empty element, OK? What do you think is going to happen? Absolutely nothing. Will you see it? No, you won't see it. I could have also shown it this way. I could have shown it like this. Okay, like that. That also means an empty, empty element for the paragraph. Again, you don't see it. Okay. All right. So let's see. Um, oh yeah, here's the other thing we need to talk about. So we should know now what is an element, what is an empty element, and what's a void element. We should know that that the, the tags that make up elements are never displayed through the web page. Now, you might say, wait a minute, Addison. I've seen a less than sign and a greater than sign in, in a web page before. So don't tell me you can't show them. Yes, you can do that. But here's what you have to do. You have to use a special code. Let me show you after C here. I'm going to go. I'm going to go before the horizontal line. Let me get rid of these paragraph things, OK? And I'm going to show you one. And it is uh, the ampersand LT for less than and a semicolon. And I'm going to put a space here, here, I am, as if it were content. And then I'm going to put this and sign again, GT for greater than and a semicolon. Now I'm going to save this. Now I'm going to come up here and refresh. Now what do you see? Now you see these things, don't you? Right? But in order for you to see them in the web page, I had to put a special code of this right here in the web uh, document. So 
you do not see these when they're actually used as a tag. You only see them when someone forces a code for you to see it in the web page. Okay. All right. So what was the next thing we were going to talk? Oh, yes. Tags are not case sensitive. Okay, HTML tags. Like for example, I could have here, I could have a lowercase p as an opening tag and then some content here, and then I could have an uppercase p uh, as a closing tag, and it would work fine. I could have, for example, here's another tag, code. I could have lowercase code here, and then some content, and then I could have a closing tag or a stop tag with a capital C, O-D-E, like that. It's, again, it would work fine. This is not true with XML. You might say, wait a minute. We haven't even talked about XML. I don't even know what XML is. That's true, but we're going to talk about it. So when I get to XML and I say XML is case sensitive, you're going to say, well, you told me it wasn't. No, I did not. I said HTML tags are not case sensitive. However, by convention, we use lowercase for HTML tags. So what you will see in this lecture series and what you will see in the majority of the document, uh, documentation, you will see lowercase tags used in order to uh, describe the element, such as this. Okay. All right. Here, let's see what else I have on my academic notes here. Okay, we're going to do a wrap-up here. And with the wrap-up, let's see if we understand what these things are. These are the terms that we should now be familiar with. The purpose, the whole purpose of this lecture, lecture six, is to understand this terminology so that when we see it in documentation about HTML5 or about the document object model, we know what it means. First of all, the first thing we should know about is what's an element. E-L-E-M-E-N-T. Of course, we're talking about what's an HTML element. And then, what is an empty element? And then we should know what is a void element. We should know what is a start tag. We should know what is an end tag. We should know what is an opening tag. If I didn't mention it, an opening tag and a start tag are the same thing. It's just another term for the same thing. And the same thing with a closing tag. Sometimes literature will call it a closing tag. Sometimes they'll call it a, an end tag. So end tag and closing tag mean the same thing. And then uh, what we need to do is talk about um, enclosed elements. Remember we had, we had the paragraph, we had the paragraph element, and then inside there we had a bold, and then we had an italic, okay? And then uh, we should know with these that these are uh, objects within the document, the web document, which allow us to use OOP, 
OOP stands for Object Oriented Programming Techniques. Q, Q U E S on any any HTML element. Okay, so we should know what an element is, we should know what an empty element is, a void element, a start tag, an end tag, an opening tag, a closing tag, and what enclosed elements are, and that the idea that these elements can be treated as objects, and uh, since they can be, we can use any of the techniques on uh, any object-oriented programming techniques on any element within our web document. Okay, that's it for this lecture. Uh, thank you for watching.